We go over the first three techniques on the Shume no Kata. Erigatami, Kata Gatami, and Juji Gatami. I'm going to use a few props. You can use as many or as few as you'd like. Um, it's going to help me for demonstrative purposes to explain the technique um, as best I can without another person. Um, I feel like it gives me a little bit of feedback too when I'm practicing it. So you know, give it a try if you like, or you can just simply use a gi is often enough to give you relative body position. But I like to use the pillow as well, uh, particularly for irigatame and katakatame to make sure where my, my hips are in the right place. So anyways, I have gi on the ground, pillow up through where the neck is and sticking out for the neck and the head, closing the gi. For the arm, I'm going to use either a broom, which most everybody should have at home, or maybe a mop, uh, or also something that many people have at home is a mobility tool. Use a roller. A roller. Um, this is just a half size one. You can use a full one. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to show it with both so that I can show it twice from both sides. For the mobility tool, push it in through the arm, got the torso, and the arm. I start by sitting out, and when I say sitting out, I'm on my butt, the leg closest to their head is straight, and the other one is up. What I'm doing with this is I don't want both my legs out, where I can be pushed one way or the other. I have a nice base to keep them from getting pushed back. I can also use my leg to push and put pressure into the body. Also, when I talked about the hip position, I want to make sure that I'm not actually on them. If my hips are on them, they're going to be able to roll me over to the other side, which is one of the uh, blue belt nawaza that we practice. So I want my hips on the floor and my torso connected to their torso, which in this case is the pillow. My back arm goes around behind the neck. The front arm goes over that arm and locks it to my body. And I'm going to try to bring my hands together and lock in. That way I've got the arm pinned to my body and my forearm is against the back of their neck and I'm sitting out. You can lean back or lean forward. Leaning forward, I'm driving my forehead into the temple as I pin them. It takes a lot of the pressure off the, the lungs and the ribs though, so I, we generally practice it by sitting back and making a corkscrew motion. I'm camming in from behind the neck as I corkscrew and tighten it up putting pressure on the ribs and compressing the lungs. Again, it's really important that I have my hips on the ground and not on, their, uh, not on them, especially if I'm leaning back. If my hips are on them, I'm going right over the other direction. So I make sure my butt's on the ground, just my torso's connected, and I'm locked in. Camming motion. Katakatami, either the arm pop free, or I never was able to get control of it. The way we generally practice it is someone puts their hand on your face to try to create some space and snap the head back, either to trap it with the leg or just to create room to get out. I don't grab the hand itself, I push at the elbow, to straighten the arm and just redirect. I'm not fighting against the strength, I'm not going to try to grab their hand and push it over. I'm pushed from the elbow, they're already pushing my head back, I go, okay, and just help them over to the other side. And then I come back and lock it in. The nice thing about this one, with irigatami, it's pretty uncomfortable. Um, but somebody's probably not going to tap unless they just say, you know, they can't get out and they're like, okay, I'm done. I can't get out. Um, there are, there are counters to escape, but if someone can't, that's usually why they're tapping or because they're letting you finish the technique. With this one, it's more than a pin. I'm actually strangling them with their own arm. My bicep on the far side has a crowded on the far side and their own bicep is on the crowded on the close side. And I'm using my body weight to push in as I cinch. This one I like to be in closer, putting my head into their temple, really driving my weight into the shoulder. There's a lot of pressure on the shoulder and pressure on karate from both sides. You can also sit back if you want with the corkscrew motion, but again, I feel like it takes a little bit of the pressure off the karate and really makes you use your arms as opposed to your body weight and gravity to get that strangle. From the other side, I'll do it again using the broom. Make sure it goes all the way through so that the broom is where the shoulder is and not under the pillow so you're able to fold the arm. Good. 
Okay, I'm sitting out. My leg is straight under theirs. The other arm is up. The other leg is up, keeping them from rolling me back and giving me that, helping me push into their body. My hips are on the ground, not up on the pillow, which would be their body. Just connected rib to ribs, and my butt's on the ground. The arm in the back is coming around from behind the arm, behind the head. The other one's going over the arm, trapping it against my body. And I'm bringing my hand together and lock in. Whatever kind of wrestling grip you want. I'm not interlacing my fingers. I just cut my hands. You can even grab this way, this way, or it's already even smaller than you. You can kind of cinch up on your forearm if you need to. Just cupping my hands together and locking it in. Again, it's just a pen. I can sit back and crank in, putting pressure on the ribs and the lungs and the back of the neck. Or I can lean forward, which takes off some of the pressure, but I can drive my head into uh, their temple. There are different escapes from this, which is one of the reasons why you might move back and forth from one to the other. If you're sitting back and they're trying to snap you back, you might actually want to be in close. Or if they're trying to roll you over forward, you might want to sit back. So partly it's going to depend on how they're trying to defend themselves. But generally, we practice this sitting back, corkscrewing into the, the lungs and the ribs. The arm's freed for whatever reason, and they're trying to snap your head back to create some space, take pressure off, maybe throw their leg over your chin and pull you backwards with their leg. Just help the arm across. I don't push at the hand, I push at the elbow. They're already pushing my head back, so I just redirect it to the other side, let them keep pushing. Coming in from behind, hands together, cinch it up. This is nice. Put the forehead in because I'm using my body weight and gravity to help strangle them. But it will also work with the sitting out motion, which will put pressure on the ribs and the lungs. Jujigatami. Again, they're still on their back, facing up. This time, I'm pinning them with side control, or as we call in judo, yoko shiogatami, side four corner hold. I'm pinning their hips and shoulders at a 90 degree angle. Heads this way, feet are that way, and I'm going the opposite direction at a 90 degree angle. My hand and arm closest to their feet goes underneath their arm, above the elbow. And when I say above, I mean between the elbow and the shoulder. I need to get counter pressure on both sides of the elbow. So if I'm on the far side of the elbow and I try to do this technique, all the pressure's on the same side. I need pressure on both sides of the elbow. So this one goes, Above the elbow, I grab my own arm, usually around the bicep, I like to grab the gi, or just grab a hold. If you don't have a gi on, just grab your bicep. The other hand goes below the elbow on the far side on the forearm. I'm pinning them with my weight. Part of it is, even if I have this lock, if I'm not really pinning them with my body weight and they can lift their shoulder, they're going to have enough slack in there to protect themselves or not be able to really get the technique on. So I'm pinning their shoulder and their body with my weight and then I've got counter pressure on both sides of the elbow with this figure four motion, camming to get the lock and the pop. One more time on the other side, using the mobility tool. They're on their back, face up. I'm at a 90 degree angle, pinning them from side, side control or Yoko Shiogitami, side four corner hold, this way. My hand closest to the feet, comes underneath the arm, above the elbow. I grab my own forearm, I grab my own bicep, and then I grab their forearm with my hand, pinning their shoulder and their body to the ground. Got this figure four motion, I'm camming into the elbow, counter pressure on both sides to get that lock or pop. Irigatami, Katakatami, Jujigatami.